Debit cards and credit cards, we all have them and use them on a daily basis. But did you know how easy it is for scammers to steal your card information? Swipe, 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 swipe. So in this video, we're going to talk about payment card fraud, what it's all about, and how you can protect yourself against it. And if you find value in this video or this entire fraud series that I'm putting together, I would appreciate it. I'll be thankful and I will be grateful if you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more of my content and it will also help out the channel. So with that being said, let's get right into the information. So what is payment card fraud? Card fraud is when scammers steal card information through various methods to create fake cards for use in person or for online purchases. Card fraud can also be accomplished through identity theft when scammers steal people's information and then with that information they open accounts or lines of credit and they go ham and do a bunch of fraud on your name. Payment card fraud is an extremely popular fraud technique worldwide. Check this out. In 2018, approximately $24 billion was lost from this fraud technique. And many reports that I see online is expecting that payment card fraud is expected to exceed $40 billion by 2027, which is insane. And also 47% of card fraud happens right here in the United States. Card fraud is extremely popular. You see it all over social media and pretty much every single rapper is talking about it. The reason for this is because this scam is very easy. All scammers need to pull this off is the card number, the expiration date, the name on the card, and the CVC code or the card verification code. Now it's important to point out that there's two different types of card verification codes. There's the CVC1 code and the CVC2 code and they both have different purposes. The CVC1 code is programmed directly into the magnetic strip on the back of our cards and we do not see that. And the CVC1 code lets banks know that the card is being used in person because it's a physical swipe. Now you have the CVC2 code. That's the three or four digit number that you see on the back of your card next to your signature. And that lets banks know that the card is being used remotely. And that's why you have to enter that information every time you make an online purchase. So it's really important you understand the difference between these two codes. Now, it may seem really difficult for a scammer to be able to get their hands on all this information, but I'm sorry, it's actually extremely easy because in this day and age, with all the information and data that we have floating out there, there's so many points that you could get your information stolen. And also that magnetic strip makes it extremely easy for information to be stolen because the majority of the information needed to make a fake card is right on that magnetic strip. Now, once the scammer has the information, it depends on which set of information they have. That's going to determine the route that they take to pull off this scam. Now, remember, there's the CVC1 code and the CVC2 code. If they have the CVC1 code, the most that the scammer can do is create fake cards and attempt to use it in person by physically swiping the card. If they have the CVC2 code, the most that they could do is do remote purchases where they're not in person. So all their purchases are going to be done online and they're going to have to manually enter the information. With how easy it is to fraud payment cards, of course, banks are looking for all sorts of ways to mitigate this scam. One of the most popular ways that scammers used to do this back in the day is with a card reader or a black box device. The way that's this, that this device works is anytime you run a card through there, it reads all the information on the magnetic strip. And remember, that information is the name, the card number, the expiration number, and the CVC1 code. And that is all they need to make a fake card. In addition to this, scammers are usually working with people who run into a bunch of cards. So that's usually your bank tellers, your waitress, your waiter, anyone who has access to a bunch of different cards, the scammer is going to give that box to that person. And the added benefit of this is they'll be able to physically see the card. So they have the CVC1 code and the CVC2 code. So that's double trouble. So EMV chips were created to try and slow down this scam. And the way that EMV chips work are they create a one time authentication code compared to when you swipe your card. It's reading the static 16 digit number on the front of the card with that one time authentication code is used for that one transaction. And then the code is obsolete. Once again, compared to when you swipe your card, that number is used and that number remains the same. So if that information is stolen, anything could be done with it. So when you input your card into an EMV terminal, it makes it much more difficult for your information to be stolen, but it's still not impossible. EMV chips have been helpful in defending against card reader scams, but of course scammers have found the way around that. And the new thing that's hit the streets is called a shimming device. A shimming device is a thin device that goes into an EMV payment terminal, and it has the ability to capture the informa information on an EMV chip. 
And now I know I said the EMV chip creates a one-time authentication code for transactions, but it also has the information that's found on the magnetic strip. So when the shimming device captures the information on the EMV card, the scammer now has the ability to create a fake card with the information that they get off the device. All right, so I found this video on YouTube. Shout out to the fourth word star telegram YouTube page. But this just shows how easy it is to install this ATM shimmer. So they just put it into this device, jam it into the ATM, and then you put the card in there. And it, it really seems like it's that simple. Pull the card out. Then you can see here they're testing it to make sure it works. And it's just crazy how fast they're able to install this. And uh, it's, it's that simple. They steal your information. See, it puts in the PIN number and confirmed it's working. And here you can see this diagram just to show how simple this device, this shimming device works. Just sits right underneath the card and it picks up all the EMV, the EMV data. And um, I don't know how legit these sites are. But just so you can see how available these things are, I saw it on this website for a thousand euro, and I saw it on this next website here for for three thousand euro. So that's about three thousand six hundred, four thousand U.S. dollars. But it's out there and it's available online, so you got to be careful. Shimming is one of the many ways that your card information can be stolen. Some other ways include the dark web, which has tons of personal information on there. Identity theft when your information is stolen and fake credit lines and bank accounts are, are open and used in your name. Phishing calls where they're able to get information and once again steal your identity and open accounts and lines of credit in your name. Corporations and databases are constantly getting hacked. It's almost inevitable that information will be stolen sooner or later. And anywhere you hand off your card, your information is being exposed and can be stolen and replicated. With how vulnerable card information is, the best thing that consumers can do is actively defend their accounts and also defend their identity. So I wanna share some advice with you. The first thing I would recommend is set account alerts on your debit and credit cards. So anytime it is used, if it's not you, you will be notified immediately. In addition to that, you wanna make a point to check your accounts regularly. So if you see any unauthorized transactions, you can report it to the bank immediately. Next, when it comes to your identity, you wanna make sure you're checking your credit report on a regular basis. I would recommend at least once a month so you don't see any unauthorized accounts being open or any uh, account credit inquiries that were done within that time frame. Also, if you're not planning to use your credit for any reason, this is something that I do. I highly recommend freezing your credit because if you don't need it for any reason, there's no need to leave it open. And if you do need it, you just call up the places, you go on the website and you can get it unfroze very quickly. The next thing, and this, this blows my mind, please do not write your pin number or any of your personal information on your card or keep it in your wallet. Don't keep your social security card in your wallet because if you have these things in your wallet and you drop it, you pretty much just dropped half your identity right on the floor and you're making it real easy for anyone who finds that to do whatever they want with your information. Next thing, when it comes to online shopping or shopping in general, I highly recommend using a credit card. So if anything crazy does happen with your card information, at least it's your credit that's in trouble and not your actual money and the bank can sort it out and your money will be safe. And EMV terminals are pretty much at 99.9% .9 of places nowadays. So if there is a place that requires you to swipe your card, you wanna be very nervous about that device. There's a high possibility they're trying to steal your card information, especially if you're going into ATM vestibules. If it's a device that requires you to have to swipe your card, I highly recommend look for a different ATM to go to. You want to only stick with devices that require you to input your card because it makes it a lot harder for your information to be stolen. And lastly, if you get any random calls claiming to be your bank or your job or your insurance company, any place that you do business with and they're asking you for personal information, I highly recommend hanging up the phone, calling them back from a number that you trust and you know, or if you have the ability to go in person and speak with a representative in person, I recommend doing that. It's way too easy to give your information over the phone. And once you do it, it's too late. There's no turning back from there. So please call back or go in person. So there you have it, folks. That's the video on payment card fraud. I hope you found value in it. If you did, please hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you wanna catch more of my content. So till then, please stay tuned. I appreciate you. Peace.